Right, fatigue. No one wants to talk about it, but it's the most important thing that any of us have to deal with. I reckon fatigue is far more important than speeding or any other major cause of accidents. It can sneak up on anybody and it happens all the time. Doesn't matter whether you're running overnight, doesn't matter whether you're working in the daytime. I remember driving out of Canberra at six o'clock in the morning after a good night's sleep and being absolutely buggered by yas. You know, other nights I can do 14 hours and half hour breaks. Now I reckon personally it comes down a lot to your diet, what you eat, when you eat it, and obviously your rest. Now, what I've always done and what works for me is if you know you've got to go at a certain time, you try and reverse engineer it. You work out how much sleep you think you're gonna need and be realistic about it. And then, you know, if you're gonna leave at, for argument, say, seven at night, well, how long does it take you to get ready? Do you wanna get up and have you know, a light meal before you go, or do you wanna have a shower before you leave? You know, if so, you might wanna be getting up at six o'clock. If you're getting up at six o'clock, when do you need to go to bed to get adequate sleep to be able to do the shifts that you're setting out to do? It's not that difficult. You've just got to think about it and pre-plan. Reverse engineer how much sleep you need, get up at the right time, and then you can go about your job to give you the best chance of not suffering fatigue. Now, it's not as simple as that. And of course, we all have different jobs and we all do different hours and we all have different demands on how we go about those jobs. So it's not a one size fits all. And like I just said, some days you can be great, some days you're gonna suffer. Now there was an accident just the other day that uh, I had the photograph sent to me. Now, I don't know whether this particular incident was fatigue related or not. I would assume it probably was, but of course assumptions, you know, what they say, to assume makes an ass out of you and me. So it may have been a medical one, it may have been a distraction problem, I don't know, but most likely a fatigue issue because that's what seems to happen. You can be staring out that windscreen, thinking you know what you're doing, thinking you're looking ahead, and all of a sudden there's something in front of you. Where did that come from? Because you haven't been paying attention because your brain switched off. And that's if your eyes are open. There's two types of falling asleep at the wheel. You can fall asleep, literally, eyes closed, totally out sound and drive off the road. Or you can be awake in the sense your eyes are open. You can be looking out the windscreen. You can think that you're on top of your game, but your brain is not processing what it's seen. As when you have one of those little, oh, geez, and you go, oh my God, I'm in the wrong lane, or I'm pointing towards a guardrail, or where'd that thing come from in front of me? You've gone too far. The best thing is, to try and know your telltale signs of getting tired. Now I've got one myself. Now, again, everyone's gonna be different, but I know myself, if I'm sitting there, my hand on the wheel, if I find myself having put my hand like that to brace my arm, and it usually happens subconsciously, if I suddenly become aware that I've got my hand sitting like that, that's my little telltale to say, you're getting tired, probably a good time to pull over and have 15 minutes, maybe half an hour, to brighten yourself up, get out, walk around the truck, do whatever you need to do. But if you don't know your telltales, you'll get yourself caught out. Now, I'm not here to preach people what they should do and how they should go about it, but it's something you need to be aware of. On a totally different light, there's been a couple of good fatigue-related pranks. Some years ago now, uh, a mate of mine did this to another mate of mine. Uh, he'd pulled up for a sleep. Now, something I never do well, I'll, I'll contradict that in just a moment. But something I never do is sleep in the driver's seat. Sleep is there for a reason. If you're gonna pull up, get into bed. And my theory is, if you get used to sleeping in the driver's seat with your head over the steering wheel, sooner or later you're gonna do it when you're not pulled up. But anyway, old mate had pulled up for a break. He had 15 minutes over the steering wheel. And another mate saw him parked on the side and thought, oh, I'll fix him up. So he's uh, turned around and uh, nosed up to him, pulled up about 30 feet from him, knowing that his habit was to sleep in the driver's seat. So he's pulled up about 30 feet away. All of a sudden he slicked the headlights and high beam on and hung off the horn. And the poor bastard nearly shat himself because he's woken up 
looking straight at an oncoming truck, thinking he'd fallen asleep driving. Now, funny prank, but very telling of what could happen if you fall asleep driving. Situation you do not want to be in, and the person coming towards you doesn't want to be in. Now, I did it to myself, pranked myself in that truck there a couple of years back. I had a, a really big night. I got into Melbourne. Uh, I was going down to, uh, I think I unloaded at uh, Mulgrave from memory, and I had to unload the trailer there and then take the trailer around to Hallam and drop it off so it could be loaded for the load coming out. And it was probably around, I don't know, four in the morning, I suppose. And I drove into the BP on Greens Road there, which had only just opened at the time. And uh, I pulled up on the back fence there. So I was having dropped the trailer, I was only in the prime mover. So I didn't want to take up any of the truck parking. So uh, I pulled up and uh, probably, I don't know, 20 feet from the, the, the end of the concrete. And then there's a fence and a bit of a paddock. And then there's a uh, Vizzy. And uh, anyway, I was absolutely buggered. Pulled my logbook out to tally up the, the end of the day and promptly fell asleep. And I would have only probably slept for about 15, 15, 20 minutes. It was just starting to show some light in the sky. And I've woken up, engine running, headlights on, looking straight out at a fence about 20 feet away. And I reckon I nearly pushed the brake pedal through the floor. Scared the crap out of me. Yeah, then I had a good laugh at myself for being such an idiot. But anyway, that's my thoughts anyway. If you're going to go to sleep, go to sleep in the bed. If you sleep over the steering wheel, sooner or later you will. Another quick story too, just to tell you how fast fatigue can get you, even when you think you're awake. Uh, actually, the day that I bought that truck there, I was driving a Western Star for someone else at the time, and I'd uh, come down from Sydney into Melbourne, and the idea was unload, reload again that night, head back out, and I had to go back up to uh, Dubbo from memory. Anyway, instead of getting in, going to bed, which I should have done, I drove over to meet the former owner, uh, Tim, his name was, good fella. Um, and uh, spent the day sorting out what we're doing with the truck, getting the payment ready, paying the money, sorting out the insurance, getting on top of everything for the new truck that I'd purchased. And I finally got back to the truck, probably had about an hour's sleep, maybe, and then headed down to Laverton to load to go up to Dubbo. Now that one was on the clock because I couldn't leave before 7.30 and I had to be at Dubbo to meet a connecting truck for part of the load. Fatigue is extremely serious and we should not make light of it and should not underplay just how important and dangerous it can be. It is the biggest killer. Stupidly, I've had it off. I've had one hour of sleep since I'd left Sydney the previous night. And I was getting up to parks and I'm thinking to myself, God, I've, I've got to do something here. I need to pull up, walk around or do something because this is just, I'm just not going to make it. So I got into parks and I came down towards the railway line there, uh, pulled over into the BP, which is on the wrong side of the road there. It's on the, on the southbound side. Uh, I'm going north, of course. And uh, I've thought to myself, look, I've got to wake myself up here. So I'm not going to just pull over. I'm actually going to make the point of driving into the BP and then reverse parking the B-double up to the fence because just the action of doing that hopefully will get my brain working again and get me thinking a bit straighter. So I've reverse parked the double. I've gone into the BP. Uh, I think I bought, oh, I can't remember now, probably a ham and cheese sandwich or something like that and, uh, and got a couple of uh, V drinks. Now, I don't drink energy drinks, so that was unusual for me, but I thought between the foul taste of them and the, the sugar content and the caffeine and God knows what's in them, that should be enough to get me through a double at least. So I've had the sandwich, out, back out to the truck, off we go again. Now, for those of you who know parks, you drive out of the BP, turn right obviously to head north again, you immediately go over the railway line, you do a, a right and then a left dog leg sort of thing, onto the street that runs parallel to the main street, that's the truck bypass, runs up to where the old Holden dealer used to be, and you come to a T-section where you turn left to join the old highway to bypass the main street. Now, that's literally a matter of minutes from where I started. So 
jumped in the truck, got her going, away we go. Now, I got up to that T-section there. This is a fully loaded B-double, mind you. I got up to the T, I've looked, it's clear. I mean, we're talking middle of the night. I'm holding the V in my hand as I turn the corner. And I fell asleep halfway around the corner. Only a moment, only what they call a micro sleep that fell asleep all the same. So I'm midway through the corner, hand on the steering wheel, holding a can of V, and I've woken up, because I've continued around the corner, I've woken up at about a 45 degree angle to the road, about to plough into park cars on the side of the road, still holding the V in my hand, didn't spill a drop. Now, thankfully, no other traffic around, stamped on the brakes, didn't hit anything. And I thought to myself, wow, because I've just woken myself up, I've just been walking around the truck, I've been in the service station, I've had some food, I'm holding a drink, which I've started. Yeah, you can't outrun fatigue. I drove probably only about three or 400 metres from there, up over the hill out of parks, and there's a parking bay on the left. So I pulled up there and had a half an hour of sleep because you cannot outrun fatigue because there's only one cure for fatigue. It's not coffee, it's not energy drinks, it's sleep.